But I, I think what we're going to do today is give um, basically like two walkthroughs. And one will be a kind of a broader project walkthrough to kind of how we arrived at the index of performative keys. Um, and then Lizzie will give a kind of a, a more detailed technical um, description of the system and how it works. Um, and I just, uh, I, I noticed that Steve Fuller wasn't in the room uh, personally, but I hope we can all channel uh, his suggestion of, um, of massive interrogation of the, um, of the index this afternoon. So, uh, so please uh, do, do that or feel free to respond uh, in however way you like. But um, yeah, I think maybe I, I can challenge his reading of the introduction, which I think he might have um, attended to sloppily. But. Uh, so the, the project that I've been doing over the last two years, in interrogating the dashboard, uh, has meant that uh, I have been looking at lots and lots of dashboards um, in contemporary use, uh, but also historically. And, uh, and I began with, uh, with looking at the earliest forms of dashboards, the emergence of the idea of a dashboard as it began um, in the horse, with the horse and carriage, actually, um, as this literally as a kind of a plank, um, and, and then moves into um, cars and, uh, and kind of has a, a, a parallel form in the cockpit with the emergence of the plane. Uh, but then around the, the 1950s, it enters uh, managerial literature, early managerial literature. And, and this is, of course, a, a kind of a moment where um, cybernetic thinking is, is perhaps um, you know, close to its peak. And, uh, and you have these uh, statements by, by corporations who are, who are kind of experimenting with new dashboards, talking about the, the CEO or the executive as a pilot, you know, steering their organization through troubled times and so on. And the dashboard emerges as this kind of thing that helps them uh, kind of understand how their organization is doing. Uh, and uh, so when I was looking at different types of dashboards, uh, so ClickSense uh, is, is one of the main ones that I've been looking at in a number of their clients. Uh, Fitbit also and a number of health related ones, these types of dashboards. Um, what became um, increasingly noticeable or, or obvious was an idea of performance and uh, that somehow dashboards uh, had an idea of performance kind of built into them. And it's something that is not like their exclusive purpose or function, but it's something that I would just see time and time and time again. Um, and there are books titled Performance Dashboards uh, at, you know, to, to add at least some credibility. Um, but then hopefully adding a little bit more, uh, where one of my major case studies uh, has been the, uh, the gov.uk or, or the government digital services team uh, who have been busy making lots and lots and lots of dashboards over the past few years. Um, and they made their dashboards on what they call the performance platform. So, uh, so this kind of, you know, this was kind of a moment of revelation for me. Like, okay, like this is, you know, this is something. Uh, and what they did was uh, every, every public service, uh, the, the kind of day-to-day -day services that, uh, that a government provides to its uh, citizens, uh, they, they decided they wanted to build performance dashboards for them. So they mapped out their services and, uh, and they tried to kind of figure out how they could digitize them, centralize them. I mean, a lot of them were already digital, but uh, to kind of bring them all together and uh, and they have now 802 of these. Um, but then they also have other types of dashboards, uh, as you can see. And then, uh, so say, uh, just to take a random dashboard. So these are the types of performance dashboards that they have been creating. But when I was visiting uh, the various sites uh, around GDS and the departments that they were making service dashboards for, uh, performance dashboards for, uh, I noticed that there were these things as well, uh, which uh, now is called full screen, but I'm sure at a point it was called big screen mode. 
And so they, they had these like large screens and you'd walk into, uh, into a department or into an office and they'd have a screen not quite as big as this but just kind of around and they'd be showing um, these types of metrics. And, uh, and sometimes a, a person would have to like run to the screen as I entered the area to turn it on to kind of show that you know, it was a real thing that they cared about. But, uh, but nevertheless, I was like deeply inspired by this, uh, this kind of ambient performance that I was seeing emerge. And, uh, and as part of my project, uh, here we go, okay. Uh, I promised the, um, the ESRC, the, the Research Council, that not only would I be uh, interrogating dashboards, but I would also be making a series of visual provocations for future dashboard design and quickly realizing that I had limited expertise in uh, information visualization or data visualization. Uh, it became apparent that I wasn't going to transform those fields within the limited time and resources available. But nevertheless, I, I wanted to think quite seriously about uh, two things. One, one, the promise that we, we would um, integrate uh, forms of social scientific knowledge into dashboards. Um, and we would also think about how the creation of dashboards could be used within research. And one of the obvious challenges that I think I've probably kind of failed at a little bit is that when you're making dashboards and you're working with visualization, uh, you're working in this kind of aesthetic territory that as soon as you try to kind of veer from a kind of a purely instrumental mode, uh, then you're at danger of producing something like art, which is you know, something I, I've, I try not to do uh, as much as possible. But whereas the medium of writing allows, uh, let's say, a, a broader spectrum between the kind of the poetic and the instrumental, you know, have all of these other kind of forms, it feels like it's, uh, it's, it's much kind of more tightly bound when, when making things like, like this. But nevertheless, uh, we got together and we workshopped uh, with uh, a bunch of my colleagues, people from industry, from government, and with um, a team of great designers from the Netherlands. And we decided uh, after th thinking, we, we came up with, a, with three or four concepts, and one of them was to really push this idea of performance. Like what, uh, no signal. Uh, what could we, this is not part of the, uh, of, the da of the dashboard. I'll just try and plug it in. Yeah. The revenge. The So anyway, I, if you look and I will continue uh, with, the, with the white noise. So basically we got together and uh, we, we decided to focus on performance and we were thinking about like, okay, what can we do? Um, and then I, I believe uh, we, it was Michael who, uh, who's, who's chairing, who suggested maybe that we thought about um, a, a KPI generator as like one of the things that we could think about doing. And I think we kind of rolled with that idea and, and tried to kind of iterate on it and to see how far we could, take, uh, we could take the idea of a generator and make it into a dashboard and a dashboard that was also meaningful. So, so this is what we, what we decided to do. Um, and the, the index of performative keys as, as presented uh, there, were, there were kind of two things of performance that I kind of wanted to uh, explore and one was the radical extension of like performance or ideas from performance management. So new types of things being folded in in a kind of, a, kind of an imperializing or kind of colonizing uh, context or, or, or practice. And, and then this, this kind of intensification, right? And these are kind of like Marxist kind of terms and, and in some ways that's deliberate. But so more detailed types of performance or, uh, or layers of performance 
analysis. So um, a metric is fed into another metric or there's a, there's, you know, something is measuring a measure. And, and so these two kind of related dynamics I thought were kind of very interesting. And the index uh, really speaks more to the kind, of, um, uh, the kind of extended idea, the radical extension of, um, of performance indicators. And so, so basically what we have before we go into the kind of technical, just the, the broad overview, is, uh, is we have these three KPIs, and uh, these are the, this, this is the number of KPIs that we've generated. And the idea is that, you know, because it would be somewhat disingenuous to offer a kind of a false number, um, at what really mattered was the kind of the formula or, the, or the, the idea that new things could be kind of subjected or folded into a performance paradigm. And, and that's kind of like the crux of what um, the, the, the kind of indicator is supposed to do. And, and so hence we have, it's just like doing its own thing out. So, uh, so, we, so we, we kind of refrained from, uh, from putting stuff in there that wasn't like, actually doing something or, or wasn't um, real. But I think at this point, uh, it's probably best to hand over to Lizzie uh, to describe the, uh, the system. Uh, yeah, I'll give a, like a kind of brief description of how these KPIs come to, uh, come to life. Um, yeah, it's basically about, there's about seven parts to the system. I'll, uh, yeah, just describe them one by one so you get an idea of the sort of the flow of what happens. Uh, we started with getting uh, cat's funnel. <laughs> Relevant to yeah, yeah. the first presentation. Um, we, of course, uh, to generate these things, we have to build um, like a corpus of, like, uh, as Nate said, sort of related, related uh, terms so that these KPIs like have some, some meaning to them. Um, so we started by gathering content, and the first point was to get all the conference abstracts uh, of the speakers. So that gave us, I don't know, I think about 40 different like, short abstracts. But of course, that's not really enough. Um, so I then took the, the terms, the conference, like, I don't know, keywords, if you want to call them. Um, and, they, and I used those as uh, queries for the Google Books uh, public API. So just throw them in there, trying to find the most relevant titles and uh, sort of store back as much as we could get per title. Yeah, here is um, a list of all the articles. So you can also um, filter them by keywords or sort of how they were gathered. Um, so yeah, once we have all that like, plain text uh, content, um, the next step is to yeah, sort of process them into manageable uh, pieces. So, Basically, um, what we did was um, yeah, use a, a tokenizer, so a method to take all these. I mean, I don't know how much of you have like experience in like natural language processing, so I'll just be vague, which is good for me too. Um, but <laughs> basically, uh, yeah, that's just a uh, tokenizer. It's just the process of taking that that text and splitting it into individual tokens. Um, and the way you do that is using a regular expression. Um, and that tries to take into account as much uh, sort of edge cases as possible. Like, basically, you want to split on space, um, but you also have to take into account punctuation, um, emojis, um, multi-byte characters, etc. Uh, so then we have uh, like a big corpus of tokens. Um, I, but as they're stored, we also run them through a um, uh, part of speech tagger, which is we use the Stanford natural NLP tools, which are freely available and high quality. So that, um, alongside the term, stores uh, its position in the article, so really like which the index of the word, uh, which article it came from, its part of speech, so if it's a noun, an adjective, whatever. Um, and then we have a, the fin finished corpus. Um, and the next kind of most important part was to look at the, yeah, the patterns of these KPIs. Um, in sort of business intelligence and government, whatever, um, like how they how they look, what, how they constructed linguistically. Like, um, so we wrote about around about a hundred um, grammars, we called them. Uh, yeah, which you can see here in the monospace um, underneath, and that's we use a sort of kind of classic templating uh, technique. You 
yeah, put things in uh, the stuff in curly brackets is what will be replaced by a term from the corpus. Um, so yeah, about a hundred of them. Um, and then yeah, the KPI generator that just pretty pretty clear at this point probably just takes those grammars, puts in a noun or a verb, and pops out these KPIs. Um, and this happens uh, automatically. So right now, I think about every five minutes, uh, we generate another 150. Um, and then that feeds this, um, like these two modes you saw, this desktop mode and the full screen mode. Um, yeah, and I think what's nice about the full screen mode is, is it feels a lot more like a, like a performance. In a way, this, this view we were just looking at um, yeah, it really shows you the, you know, the back end, if you will, of how these things are, are gathered, that everything is dimming down. Yeah. Um, this is payback for yeah, like yeah, my yeah. organizing skills so far at the event. <laughs> it's just, it's all... Um, so that runs like on a cron job on a server just every five minutes, and at that moment it also sends a, a tweet using like a little, using the Twitter API. So there's a little tweet bot to go along with it which I think will keep running because it uh, has some... Yeah, and so, like, what's been really nice is to watch... I think the system itself is quite simple, but um, the effect was like, immediately quite... I don't know. In a lot of the time, you just get garbage out of things like this, but uh, because the KPIs themselves, like, structurally, are really simple, I think um, it was pretty successful. So you can look at the... 56,000 that are there so far. Um, and the book is actually, I, I can't remember what date, but basically like everything that had been generated up to a certain point. So that was about 8,000 or something mm -hmm. in the book. And then there's the big screen yeah. version that you've been seeing as well for the kind of ambient effect <laughs> of our performance. Yeah, so yeah. cool. All right, so yeah, thanks. Thank you.